couple weeks ago, we said that we had an episode on here. I think it was the last episode before we went on a four week break here. And I think the last the last thing that we talked about was um, three episodes ago. Uh, we had a discussion on here that he nominates a black woman to the Supreme Court. So we have an update for that. Um, so he did nominate a black woman to the Supreme Court to uh, take over uh, Justin Justice Pryor's uh, retirement. So President Biden nominated Judge uh, Jackson to serve as the next justice on Supreme Court. Uh, so we're going to dive into her background right here real quick. So Judge Jackson. Uh, one second. So Judge Jackson was born in Washington, D.C. and grew up in Miami, Florida. Her parents attended segregated primary schools and then, and then attended uh, HBCUs colleges, universities and colleges. Uh, both started their career as public school teachers and became leaders and administrators in the Miami-Dade public school system. When Judge Jackson was in preschool, her father attended law school. In, in a 2017 lecture, Judge Jackson traced her love of the law back to sitting next to her father in, her, in their apartment as he tackled his law school homework, reading cases and preparing for satiratic questioning while she undertook her preschool homework coloring books. Judge Jackson stood out as a high achiever throughout her childhood. She was a speech and debate star who was elected mayor of Palmetto Junior High, student body president of Miami Plano Senior High School. But like many black women, Judge Jackson still faced naysayers. When Judge Jackson told her high school guidance counselor she wanted to attend Harvard, the guidance counselor, the guidance counselor warned that Judge Jackson should not set her sight so high. But that didn't stop Judge Jackson. She graduated magna cum laude from Harvard University, then attended Harvard Law School while she graduated cum laude and was editor of a of the Harvard Law Review. Judge Jackson lives with her husband, Patrick, and their two daughters in Washington, D.C. So let's, so what is her experience? So she was a judge on the U.S. Court of Appeals for the D.C. Circuit. So Judge Jackson was, was one of President Biden's first judicial nominees. She was confirmed with bipartisan by support of the U.S. U.S. Court of Appeals for the D.C. Circuit in 2021, so last year. She was the judge on U.S. District Court for the, for the D.C. So President Obama, former President Obama, nominated Judge Jackson to be, the, to be a district court judge for the U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia in 2012. She was confirmed with person with support in 2013. She was the vice chair of the U.S. Sentencing Commission. So again, former President Obama nominated Judge Jackson to serve as the vice chair of the U.S. Sentencing Commission in 2009. And again, she was confirmed with support in 2010. But prior to serving as a judge, Judge Jackson followed in the first step of her mentor, just Justice Pryor, by working on the U.S. Sentencing Commission, the commission which President Biden fought to create as a member of the U.S. Senate, is partisan by design. Her work there focused on reducing unwarranted sentencing disparities and ensuring the federal sentences were just and proportionate. She was a public defender. So she represented defendants who did not have the means to pay for a lawyer. She would be the first former public, federal public defender to serve on the Supreme Court. Also, she was the Supreme Court clerk. So she served as Justice Pryor's law clerk and learned up 
close how important it is for Supreme Court justice to build consensus and to speak at a Main Street understanding of the Constitution. And perspective on the legal system. So because of her diverse and broad of public service, Judge Jackson has a unique appreciation of how critical it is for the justice system to be fair and impartial. With multiple law enforcement officials and her family, she also has a personal understanding of the stakes of the legal system. After serving in the U.S. Army and being deployed to Iraq and Egypt, Jackson's brother served as a police officer in Baltimore, and two of her uncles were police officers in Miami. So, so what about the, the nomination process? So what criteria did President Biden use to predict his nominee? Well, he conducted a rigorous process to identify Justice Pryor's replacement. So as a longtime chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee, he took this seriously. He took the, the constitutional requirements seriously by making the appointment by with and with the advice and consent of the Senate. Uh, by seeking advice by senators in both parties. Uh, he sought a candidate with ex exponential, credible, impeachable character and unwavering dedication to the rule of the law. He also sought a nominee who is wife, wise, uh, problematic, and has a deep understanding of the Constitution as an enduring character. Char Charter of Liberty. Also, he finally, the president saw an, an individual who is committed to equal justice under the law who understands the profound impact that the Supreme Court decisions can have on the lives of American people. So, what's happened next? Well, now he will seek the Senate's consent to confirm Judge Jackson to, do, to the Supreme Court. So, as of right now, we do not know how long, we do not know how long, but we will, we will give you up to speed uh, of, 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 of if, if <laughs> this is a big old if, if, if it's official. Um, of if it's official. Um, so we will we will let you know as soon as possible. Okay. We will let you know as soon as possible. I think she will um, if so she will be the very first very first uh, to serve on the Supreme Court. And right now it's already it's already at the end of March. So anything can and will happen in the next um, and it's a couple of days, so... Um.